Hey guys, Barry here. I just wanted to mention that this video is part of a course that I have on Udemy. If you'd like to support my work and get the full course, please use the link in the description below to get it at a discounted price. Thanks guys, back to the video. All right guys, welcome. I'm hoping that you checked out the previous slide where I gave you links for VS Code, Visual Studio Code, and also the link to install Node.js because those are going to be required for this next bit. Uh, Node.js just is something you install on your computer. You don't actually open like an app or anything for it, but VS Code has this, this app. It is an IDE, an integrated development environment. So we use this to write all our code in. So you keep it all in one space. So I'm going to start off by actually going to control tilde, which is this, uh, this wonderful little console over here. We can see our terminal. You could also go to view and say show well actually where is it i don't even know anymore um terminal so yeah you can you can show your terminal here you can say new terminal split terminal so i've said new terminal i can do stuff there it's kind of weird um so this is our terminal and what i like to do is i like to keep all my stuff in so i've cd'd back to my c drive you start off in this this little area here and i cd'd back there and then I have a dev folder where I like to keep everything in. If you don't have a specific place to keep your projects in, then maybe just do what I do. Make a, a, a folder on your C drive called dev. When you are there, you could just go back and you can say mkdri. And um, I'm going to write test because I already have dev. So then I can cd into test. Uh, but you can also just, you'll be saying dev there for that test area. So I'm seeding into dev. And this is where I'm going to create my, my new project. So in order to create a new app, because you've got node installed, we can do something called MPX, which is this node package creator thing. And we say create react app, make sure you spell that correctly. And then we're going to have the name of our app. I'll just call it react Sudoku. And then. I'm going to teach you how to do TypeScript because this is becoming an industry standard and I use it in all my projects or use it in my company. It has saved me so many headaches to use TypeScript. So you use this TypeScript template. So once you've got that all in there, make sure it's spelled correctly because if you do have spelling errors, you, you will have issues. Um, you hit enter and we will create our React app. So this should all theoretically work. If it doesn't, please just leave a question in the Q&A area and, and see what other people have asked. Maybe they can help you as well. And, and yeah, you should be good to go, but I will come back when this is done. It will take some time. So I'll be right back. All right. I've skipped forward to everything being done. Um, a whole bunch of stuff went here. I'm scrolling up like crazy. Uh, just tons of things happened. So it, it installed all the things we need to install. We've got it all good to go. And it tells you a bunch of commands that you can use. So right now we're still in our dev directory. We have to go into CD react Sudoku. And I've spelled that right. So there we go. It actually created us a new directory with all this stuff in it. Now we do have something that we need to do here uh, to actually get our development environment looking at our project. We need to go to file, open folder. Uh, it is the first. I haven't done my New Year's resolution yet. I need to fix all this. Um, I'm quite a mess at the moment, but we have called it React Sudoku. So I'm going to select that folder and open that. So I've opened a new window, basically. I'm going to open my terminal again. And now the terminal is automatically opened up to cd slash dev slash react sudoku, which is great. And this is our, these are our project folders. So as you can see, we've got our node modules. This is like all the packages, the external libraries that we use. They all go into this massive folder here, like everything. You don't usually publish that to source control because you can generate that client side or like, yeah, on your desktop once you've actually downloaded the project. To do that, you actually have to run um, npm install. If you use yarn, you can just run yarn. Um, I'm going to use npm install because it's just one less thing to set up. But if you run npm install, it will install all the node modules that you find in this package JSON over here. So here we have a whole bunch of dependencies. They're basically all of these dependencies. Um, I'll split this up into normal dependencies and dev dependencies later. I'll do that in another video, but I'm just kind of showing you what our app is doing. So when I run npm install, it will install all of these um, and all of their dependencies and stuff in node modules so that everything just works and we're all good to go. 
Uh, we have a get ignore file, so if you're using source control example, it, it won't push through node modules. That's why this is grayed out at the moment. And we've got this PNP, like just random files that should not go into source control and don't need to, like environment variables and stuff like that. There's a readme, this is generated by create react app. So that all looks good. Don't stress about these icons. I'm gonna, they, I know they look cool and they might look bad on yours, but I will show you how to fix that soon. Cool. And we have a, a TS config, which is our TypeScript configuration. Our React scripts actually overwrite this if you do stuff that you shouldn't be doing with this. So that's a thing. Yarn lock, this is just like, because I use yarn, it uses that. We actually are supposed to use package lock in general, I, I use Yarn a lot, so you might have something called package lock and it might be generated after this npm install runs. So this is just kind of those issues where you have a package loader called npm and you have one called Yarn and they both kind of do, they do the same thing, but I just use Yarn because I think there's some features that Yarn has that npm doesn't, but I'm not too like, you know, strict on that. So those are our root level stuff. I think it's worth uh, looking at our public things. So here we have a fav icon. A fav icon is basically, uh, if I can find my React app, I'm busy typing it in now. Um, I'll bring it to the screen. Uh, that is a fav icon, that little Sudoku icon over there. Um, index HTML, this is just the HTML that we use for our React app. You end up loading the whole React app into this div here. And then these are just our little React logos. I'm actually gonna replace this with nicer logos that match our stuff better. Manifest, this is just also when you're building your React app, it shows you what logos it's using. So we kind of use this in that progressive web app stuff and deploying applications. So you, you get that metadata kind of set up nicely. I'll change that later. Robots.txt is something that is used for search engine optimization. We're not gonna be using this in this tutorial. It's just kind of a bit irrelevant. And then finally, our source folder. This is where we're going to be doing most of our coding. It will be in here. And we're going to change this a lot so that it actually is like nice and ordered. You'll see later on, like this is going to look completely different. Um, app CSS, this is the CSS, the cascading style sheets for our application. So it's just, yeah, style sheets, you know, um, typical HTML, CSS. App test, this is a just testing thing that we use for testing if our app is working and stuff. This is our app.tx file. So they've just built an app for us and it's all kind of good to go. And uh, there's more CSS. This is index for the, the CSS for the index. You'll see how that works. This app TSX, it's TypeScript. You know, JSX, you have JavaScript extension. This is TypeScript extension. So just it's JSX with TypeScript. So we have typing here, which is a little bit more different to your normal JSX stuff, but we'll talk about that later. I'm just trying to give you an overview at the moment. As you can see, this imports the app CSS from there. Um, over here, we've got index CSS, index.tsx. It imports the app, which is that one there, and it imports index.css from there. And this is just our general, you know, how to initiate a React project. We've also got the logo here. This is used in, I'm gonna open this in two, two screens. This is used in, I'm thinking I should make my screens a bit bigger. There we go. This is basically used in, in the actual app thing here. We, we load the logo in, um, that's the source that we use. So the logo comes from here, it's an SVG. This react app env.d.ts is a, a declarations file. And this is actually quite cool. Um, this is a feature of TypeScript, so we'll look into that. Um, I actually won't look at that because I fixed it. Um, so don't worry about that. Service worker, this is what we can use to, it's also generated by create react app. This is what we can use to, to actually make our app work offline. And we actually are just going to use the one that create react app has given us because they've kind of optimized that and they've, they have comments everywhere on what everything does. So you, if you want to read through that, you can learn about it by reading it. But if you don't, it's fine. I actually usually remove the comments because it's just more redundant stuff. And I, I know how to read code, so I know what it does. And I've looked at this a lot, but that's that. 
this setup tests folder or file is is just you know something that you need to do for the testing library to work um, setup tests is basically the file that gets looked at before the test runs so for the test to run they need to import this testing library just dom expect extend expect stuff it's pretty straightforward um, you can add more stuff to this but in our tutorial we won't so i think we've properly looked over everything um, because I used npm install, this all worked. We've managed to do everything. Um, yeah, this is it's just a bunch of notes and stuff. They're not too important. It seems to have worked. There were no errors. There were just warnings, and that's fine. So that generates a package lock JSON. Um, I'm going to delete the yarn lock because we don't really need that because the package lock is is that we'd, we've just decided we're going to use npm for this. If you're using yarn, you're familiar with yarn, you can keep using yarn. If not then just follow me with the npm install stuff cool i'm going to cut the video here because we have been talking for a while and that was quite a mouthful don't worry we're going to go into everything in a lot more detail i was just giving you an overview of everything i'll catch you guys in the next video cheers guys